Coming up next, it's a UFC heavyweight division collision. Well, it's always exciting when you have such a high-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. This man has been a master of the submission in the UFC, and even though a lot of people know what's coming, more often than not, they're unable to stop. Because the knowledge, the knowledge of the jiu-jitsu game is truly something that it's hard to replicate when a guy is as good as he is. I mean, he will jump for a triangle. He will jump for an arm bar. And as you slam him to the ground, he starts to understand, OK, I'm right where I need you right now. This is when the game starts for him. If he doesn't secure that submission, he gets you where he needs you to be in order to start to really make you drown. It's like going in deep water oh. and getting pulled down over and over again because every time you think, if I do this, it'll make it better, it just makes it worse. And best of luck trying to find a training partner to simulate this guy in the gym. It can't happen, and it won't happen. Well, this guy has truly made the takedown a thing of beauty in mixed martial arts with respect to yourself and George St. Pierre and the truly great takedown artists. This guy's closing the gap and, and entering that company in the eyes of men. Oh, absolutely, because he's done such a great job of timing takedowns. You didn't see, I haven't seen anyone so good at slipping a jab into a takedown since George St. Pierre. Right. He does a phenomenal job of getting from step one to step two before his opponent even realizes, now he's in on my leg. And if they do get their hips back, immediately he's up into a foot sweep, or a headlock, or an inside trip. It's just so many different ways for him to get you to the floor that he will throw every single one at you every single time. And a lot of fighters talk about that wrestling maintenance and how hard it is, right, over the course of a career to continue to drill those things. He talks a lot about that, and that's why he's continued to realize success here in the UFC. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Dan Mergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out Madison Square Garden Arena in New York City. It's time! Five rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a freestyle fighter. Making his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet six inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds. Fighting. Alice Verdes, California, USA, The Doctor. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a kickboxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 154 pounds, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Assassin. Alright, the rules in the locker room. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. I want a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, go back to your corners, come out fighting. They touch him up, and we are underway. Imagine having a reach advantage like this. What a luxury. It's a luxury. I've never had one over the course of my entire career. But fighting guys that are taller, you struggle whenever they are very aware of such a massive advantage. This guy is going to try and use this tonight. Oh, I love the jab. I know you love the jab. That was a nice one. It's my favorite punch in all of fighting. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. Really timing his shots nicely, good tempo, very accurate, finding the range with relative ease. Yeah, he's doing a great job of really overwhelming his opponent with activity. 
big ball from Punch Land. Now we get back to range. Missed with that right hand. Ooh, wee. Ooh, wee, what a right hand by this young man. Beautiful body kick. And both guys really throwing with authority. He's in a good flow right now. He's landing big shots to the body. Gets the elbow up into the target. Well, if you like Muay Thai striking, this might be your moment in this fight as he gets the tie clinch. This is a massive moment for this fighter. He's a great Muay Thai fighter. Look for him to go knee-knee and then try to land a big one to the head. And he connects with a punch there. We'll see if he can follow it up. He landed that punch over and over again. What's he gonna do to follow up? Oh, nice job there to land the knee strike to the body again, making great use of his length in this match. Good series of strikes for him there, staying busy and staying accurate. I mean, the accuracy is unbelievable. Got the single collar tie. Right hand punch with the clinch. Beautiful kick. Again, back into this position. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Oh, how about this kicking game on full display tonight? Kicks back to back, He's truly makes up the target. Sight to behold. Good defense to block the strike coming back. He missed with that jab attempt there. He loaded up with that right hand, too. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single. Shot there, he's lucky his head's still attached to his body. The last time I saw an uppercut like that, it was Overeem versus Ndagu. And you know, they still haven't found Alistair Overeem's head. So a strong five minutes down. Well, what a round it was, especially from a striking standpoint, DC, take us through. High-level striking. I mean, this is what people come through the doors to see. Two men stand on a quarter, chest to chest, forehead to forehead, and let it all fly. I'm surprised nobody went out, but it does excite me for the next round. Okay, you ready, round two? Ready? It's all right, here we go with round two. Good use of his reach advantage as he lands the straight punch there. Yes. Able to check the high kick. Nice strike. And they separate. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Spinning back fist. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, now going to the judo throw. He ends up in side control. A lot of options for him here. Yeah, he can either go ground and pump or he can chase the mission. Down into his mount. Oh, big combination of ground and pound strikes here, DC. This could be the beginning of the end. I mean, you gotta be very careful when you take these big ground and pound strikes. You need a controlled posture on the bottom. And if you're the top guy, the guy that's looking to finish, continue to gain posture and rain down big strikes on your opponent. Just over three minutes to go.
into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. If they try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submissions. Well, he's more than content to walk off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. Starting to do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Oh, collar tie. Nice punch here. 20 seconds to go round two. Oh, man, this guy kicks like a mule. So hard, he kicks so hard every time you see him drive his shin into his opponent. And the horn sounds on round two. Well, a lot of high level striking action in that last round. Daniel, take us through it if you will. Tit for tat. Who has the best chin? It seemed as though they were looking for that answer. Both guys took risk. What a fantastic round. All right, here we go with our next round, DC. Pretty good game plan in the previous round. Attack the body to great effect, and we'll look to continue to do so here. He has done a great job of making the investment. The investment to the body that may not pay dividends early, but as the fight goes long, you will see it start to pay. Oh. Oh. He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. He has landed some good shots, DC, but really unable to string anything together in terms of solid combinations. It's because he's not committing to it fully. He throws his jab. He may throw the right hand out there, but he's not really sitting down on the right hand. He really doesn't seem to have the intent on landing it. He's got to be confident that it's going to land, and he's got to really throw his whole entire body into the strike. A little single collar tie there. Nice connection with that punch. It's one thing to have an edge in reach. It's another to take advantage. Nicely done. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. Big shots. Right hand upstairs. Good series of strikes by him there. Great job of mixing it up, staying active. Keep it busy, doing great work. Oh, he's really starting to apply pressure on his opponent here. Different approach here in the last couple rounds. And it's the exact sense of urgency that you want to see from a fighter. Take the judges out of it. Oh, lands a stiff punch there. Nice connection. Oh, nice land. Oh! Big knee. Oh! Jab hurt him a little bit. and it landed exactly as he was hoping for. He has a commitment to kick it tonight, and it shows. Oh! Knee to the body, it's blocked. All right, he'll engage in a single hollow tie. Oh, big punch land. Oh, he lands another strike to the body, really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection, and these will take their toll as this fight goes into the latter rounds. Left hand punch with the clinch. Both fighters throwing heat now. Big left hook coming, it's blocked. Man, is he timing his shots well here tonight, DC. It's hard to recall him being this accurate in the past. I mean, he is so sharp. And not only is he accurate, he's also keeping very busy. Big kick land. Battling for hooks. What a body kick. Ooh, blocks the shot. Trying to establish that jab once again. Oh! 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 Entertaining scrap so far. Oh, what a way to end the round. He got stunned by a huge shot there just before you heard the horn. So he gets saved by the bell. The question is, though, what type of condition will he be in when he gets up off that stool? 60 seconds here to recover. The onus is on his corner to keep his head in the fight.
All right, so there's the end of the round. He stayed committed to doing damage upstairs and landed a seminal blow in that round. It was accumulation of those strikes. He kept hitting over and over to the head. Eventually, he found the, the one that really did damage his opponent. All right, are you ready? You ready? Oh! Dude's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, he might be out. Leg kick. His opponent could be out of here soon, DC. He's almost done. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, you don't know whether to run, hide, grab, or wrestle. He's, a, he, I mean, he's confused. He's as confused as he was on his first test in elementary school. I mean, look at the commitment to kick in this fight. Right hand punch to the clinch. Another knee there, DC. It doesn't always play to be the taller fighter. In this instance, it most certainly did. Oh, made good use of his size there as he lands the flush knee. Head kick. Yeah, he's mixed it all up. Oh, lands that punch. Back to the left hand now, unable to connect. Reach advantage as he landed the jab there. He's back to push position. This is where he has done a ton of good work here. Punch, punch, punch to the head from the clinch. Switching stances here. Punch on the top. Closing the distance here. The biggest shot that he's landed all night. A massive uppercut land. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Close guard. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. Gets up again here, but Burton. Beautiful punch. Oh! Huge right hand! What? So he's sort of turtled up here, not great body language. Perhaps he's trying to bait him in a little bit. Every time these guys come together, man, you just hear the, the punches and everything landing. Both, both very powerful, very, very explosive. And he comes through with a big knee. Switches his and what a round. Oh, the round is over and blood is just fauceting out of his cheek. That cheek has gotten out of control. Cut man can only do so much. And given the fact that that cut continues to be attacked by the opponent, if this thing gets any worse, they're going to stop this fight. All right, so there's the horn. That means it's the end of the round. And a lot of good offensive wrestling work from him over those previous five minutes. I mean, great offensive wrestling. Every time he changed levels, and got to his opponent's legs, he was able to secure the takedown. Let's see what type of fatigue his opponent will carry into the next, next round. Next round, guys, you ready? You ready? Fifth and final round. Nice punch, man. Wow! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent right back. Shot there. Big knee lands there. Wow. Oh! And just like that, the fight is over. Oh my goodness. You knew if he landed that weapon repeatedly, it could be a short night for his opponent, but that was just one perfectly placed strike that his opponent candidly didn't even see coming. It landed flush, 
and the rest, as they say, is history. Big knockout win for him here tonight. All right, DC, no Telestrator tonight, but we're gonna get you some highlights from this one. This was a fight that had it all, and for my money, his best performance to date. His best performance to date in the biggest moment. In the biggest moments, you gotta show up. And that's exactly what he did tonight. He used every bit of his skill to get the job done. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mugliotta is going to stop in this contest at 1 minute, 14 seconds of round number 5. Playing the winner by knockout, the doctor. Watch, right, so there he is, the man of the hour. What a massive knockout for him to get this win in style tonight. He did everything he needed to do to find the knockout. Now he can celebrate with his family and friends as they earn this spectacular victory.